Yo! So, I've wanted to make a photo zine for years, um, but something would always stop me. I'd come up with a couple ideas, go around and shoot a bunch of photos, but it never really got beyond that point. I think the reason was I kind of needed someone to design it for me. Um, if you take one look at my thumbnails, you'll see I'm definitely no graphic designer, but it's kind of just a big thing to ask your homie to do for you. Ah, oh, bro, where are you going? I got pizza <gasps> right here. So I kind of stalled and thought about it and it took a really long time, but eventually I was just like, you know what, why not just do it myself? And I did. So hopefully this video can help you if you're keen on making a photo zine too. Okay, step zero. Find a place to write all this down. Like here. Or there. Or there. Step one, your idea. Okay, so you have two options. Have an idea and go find some photos or have some photos and go find an idea. Now, both these options have their merits. If you start with an idea, well, you know what to shoot. You also know what not to shoot. And starting with an idea, the images are just more likely to fit the idea with precision and clarity. This is super useful if there's like a very specific point that you're trying to make with the zine. Your other option is to start with photos that you already have. And this has a couple obvious benefits. Number one, you've got an archive to choose from. So all the photos are already there and you can start straight away without doing any more procrastination. But maybe a little bit less obvious than that, if you start with the photos first and the idea follows, there might be a slightly less precise connection between the two. This can leave room for a little bit of ambiguity, which might sound like a bad thing, but in my opinion, it just makes the work possibly a little bit more interesting. And yeah, it's like a roughness around the edges that can let a little bit of light in. When I made my zine dirty work, I went with option two. I knew if I started with a new idea right from the get-go, it would just amount to me procrastinating a whole bunch more and it would take even longer to make one of these zines. Making a zine filled me with a fair amount of insecurity, but I knew if I started from scratch, it would just be me trying to avoid the discomfort of putting something out into the world by which people can judge me. And plus, I might have totally sucked at it. So personally, to get right into it, I went to my archive and I suggest it as a good place to start. Step two, rough selection. Okay, whether you scroll deep into your Instagram feed, log into your old Flickr account, or you're a psychopath that likes to print everything, it's time to go through your photos and find which ones you want to put in your zine. I suggest being quite liberal here. Pull out a bunch of images that you like and yeah, start looking for what is consistent among them. Let that guide you as you go through all your photos. At this point, if there are any images that really feel like they don't fit, you can start taking those ones away and you'll start to see something more cohesive forming. I found a couple of recurring subjects when I was going through all my photos, but the one that I thought was the strongest and I had the biggest catalog of was working men. Once I'd identified them as a subject, I thought and wrote a little bit about work in order to just have a bit more of a cohesive idea about how all these images could work with the subject. I didn't want it to just be like a catalog of my photographs, but I wanted the photos to be in service of an idea. I just came to the idea after having gone through my work and seeing the photographs first all put together. Step three, find a print shop. It might be a surprise that I'm putting this step so early, 
but it'll save you a lot of heartache later. Ultimately, you're going to be sending your zine as a PDF to the print shop. They might prefer a certain size bleed. They might only offer saddle stitch or perfect bound. And they might have some limitations on the size that you can make. Knowing this ahead of time means that you can design something that the print shop can actually make. It also means you won't have to go back and do reformatting after you've designed everything, which would be super time consuming and pretty lame. Finding a print shop first can actually also save you a little bit of money if you design to one of the sizes that they have on offer instead of custom sizing. It just means it's probably going to be a little bit cheaper at the end of the day. I used an online print shop here in Korea and it was pretty simple and I could check out all the prices and paper options before printing. So yeah, that was pretty useful. I suggest searching for something like that. Basically, you just want to know all the limitations of your print shop before you do the designing because this can save you a lot of time later on. A good print shop will have all this information available. Okay, it's time to get to one of the parts that I dreaded the most. Step four, InDesign. Okay, I'm back. Step four, InDesign. I set up my zine on InDesign. I've included a link in the description to the dude who taught me how to do it. He's a hero of the internet. And so if you don't know how to use InDesign, uh, you can follow his tutorials. I followed them once, uh, even some of the kind of lame ones, and it taught me everything that I need to know. So I made my zine B5, which just felt like the right size, not too big, not too small. And here's how I set up my InDesign file. I filled in the sizes, making sure my units were right. I checked my orientation was portrait, and I clicked facing pages. That just makes sure that you have like a double page spread going on. And I also just set a random number of pages, um, like not too many, like just, you know, a reasonable amount. You can always add or delete pages later if you need. I set my bleed at five millimeters on the top, bottom and the sides, just because the print shop told me to. Just remember anything that goes off the edge of the page and into the bleed is going to get cut off. So if you want to print all the way up to the edge, you actually have to print a little bit over the edge of the page and you're gonna lose just a little bit of your image. So just keep that in mind. The column and the gutter are there for the text. Here's the newspaper that the Buddhist lady from before likes to give to me when she's trying to get me to go to her gatherings. Apparently this is the dude who has all the answers. I looked him up and it turns out he's a photographer. So I know for a fact he doesn't have all the answers. Crushes a tug of war though. Anyway, these are the columns and this space in between is the gutter. I set my margins at 10 millimeters. This just gave me a frame on every page that I could work within just to keep things consistent. I ignored the slug and left it at zero, thanks to this dude. And that was pretty much it. Well, for me, I had to do a little bit more because I made a perfect bound zine. And so I had to do a separate PDF for the cover. But if you just plan on using staples, you don't have to worry about making a separate PDF for the cover. If you are doing perfect bound, then your print shop should have some details on just how the cover PDF should look. But don't stress, it's basically the same as the file we just made together. From here on out, you're just dragging in photos into the file and moving them around. Honestly, it's pretty chill. I was kind of daunted at first when I started using InDesign, but the more I played around with it, I realized it's not magic. I double-checked all my designs with a designer friend of mine 
and that pretty much just confirmed it. This part of the process is a lot easier to DIY than you might think. Now that you have your document set up, time to start making a zine. Step five, layer and sequence. Welcome to the hardest and funnest part of making your zine, sequencing and layout. This is where your zine will get a lot of its character and all of its flow. It's second to only the photos in terms of communicating your idea. Anyway, the layout and the sequence is where you're trying to do a few different things at once. Most importantly, that is to introduce the idea, expand on the idea, and try and maintain the reader's interest. Introducing the idea. The cover is going to do a lot of work for you here. Whether you use an image or a design or text, try to think about the first impression you want your reader to have. How much do you want them to know about what they're about to see? This is my first attempt at a cover. Funnily enough, after showing this to a few people, one of the bits of advice I got was to try and just copy something else that I liked. Uh, here's what I copied when I was making this. <laughs> All the feedback that I got about this was pretty negative. Uh, no one really liked the design or the title or the image. And looking back, I do have to agree, um, this was a failure. <laughs> It didn't look great, and the title was just a little bit too jokey. Yeah, it just didn't really strike the tone that I wanted to hit. I changed the title to Dirty Work, and I just used an image on the cover instead of a design. I just wanted to keep it a bit more simple and just work within things that I had a little bit more control over. Like I said, I'm no designer, but I have photos, so I used one of those instead. I ended up screen printing the title because I wanted there to be a handmade element in these zines. Plus, it also worked with the theme of manual labor. Expanding on the idea. Okay, so now we can expand on our idea by putting our images in order. I think the best bit of advice I can give here is try not to spoon feed your reader and try not be needlessly opaque. Neither really takes the reader seriously and it's nice just to respect the fact that they're paying you some attention. Speaking of which, so one way to begin is to start with images that work as an extended introduction. I started with this image of a working man making eye contact with the camera. And I did that because I wanted to create the sense of I see you, you see me, like inequality or balance between the reader and the subject. I also made the image full bleed so it'll kind of like spread out into real life and seem less like a picture with a white frame. Next up, I used these two images of the front and back of working men, just to suggest that we're gonna take a comprehensive look at the subject. And I used a white border on this one, just to bring a bit of balance between the two subjects. 
And then the next two images, I used these two landscape images together because one, I mean, the color matches really nicely, but two, there was a kind of flow from one image to the next, just through the form. And I liked how that suggested that these images are working together. They're not in isolation. Like these working men, the images as well are, they're working in unison. Next up, a double page spread to change up the flow of the sequence and also to keep the viewer's eye moving. Something I was sensitive to while trying to put the zine together was that I didn't want the viewer's eye to always be on the same part of the page. So I always try to keep it moving just to try and keep their attention. And then once you feel like your subject has been sufficiently introduced, you can start moving on to images that are slightly more tenuous or ambiguous in connection. So I didn't initially see this pair when I put an early version of the zine together, but I showed it to a friend of mine, this guy, and he actually suggested that I put these two images together, which was much better than what I had done. Same with these two and the relationship between the shapes and the colors. And this is, I think, one of the strongest pairs in the zine uh, for a couple of reasons. It has like bits and pieces of all the points I've mentioned looking at the previous images in the sequence. There's a nice similarity in the tone and the colors. There is a balance between the left and the right and also a nice kind of linear flow from one side to the other. There's some connections in the details and there is also this added sense of time, like a before after effect. They're stacking and here it's stacked. So when you get a couple of your ideas working together in a sequence, it can be really powerful, especially if you've set up your reader to be sensitive to them. So something I've learned from 25 years of listening exclusively to skate punk is the power of the unexpected. Stop. And so that's why I used an image like this, which is a lot darker. And once again, you are being looked directly in the eye. The point I'm trying to make is that throughout your sequence, you can build flow and then break it. And you can do that in order to keep the reader's attention. And you can also do it in order to prepare them for any significant changes that are about to come. I think it's best to just play. Try a bunch of different things and some of those things all work. Just stick with those. Once you have a rough sequence lined up, then just tweak and keep tweaking. Eventually it'll all come together. Last couple quick tips. Limit your layout options for consistency. How an image makes you feel can determine its place in the sequence. Reward your readers for their attention. Step six, test and refine. Once you're satisfied with your layout and your sequence, please do a test print. It costs money, but it's totally worth it. If you can, I'd say print two copies, and then you can go through it and just get a sense of how it actually works in person. I changed up a couple of the pairs and moved some of the images around after I could see them in person. And having two zines here is really useful because you can actually do it by hand. You can also see how the colors come out printed and that's really nice because then you can just make sure the colors are coming out how you want them to be and to make sure that the colors are working nicely between the images. If you have the means, it is a nice idea to do a second test print if you've made any significant changes. And this will also give you a chance to test out different paper stocks if you just want to get like a in-person look at how the different papers work with your images. Step seven, print and package. Nearly there. Okay, so when it comes to printing, your print shop should have some specifications on how they want the PDF to look. Here's what mine looked like, and I'm guessing yours will look similar. My shop actually saw that I had doubled one side of the double page spreads, and they wouldn't progress in the printing process until I confirmed that this was intentional. I can't promise every shop will do this, but Chances are, if you've made any like major errors, you'll get a message just letting you know that you need to double check it. 
Once you get your zine back, the last thing to do is to package it. I think some of the best feedback I got was about how I packaged the zines. And I just did that by putting them in these green bags that I got from the hardware store. And then I sealed them with caution tape. They just fit the theme really nicely and gave the reader a sense of what the zine was gonna be about before they'd even opened it. And with that, there's only one last step. Step eight, experience the enduring happiness that surely comes on the back of all this effort. Making a zine was incredibly helpful for me. I guess it gave me a sense of closure about this subject. And after seeing what does and what doesn't work within this format, it's given me a few ideas about how to approach my next project. I try to do all this without chewing your ear off too much, but if you do have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. I'll do my absolute best to help. You can grab a copy of Dirty Work on my website or the Polite Company Press homepage. They're not too much and they look rad in person. If you want to see all of this in written format, uh, sometimes that's a little bit easier to work from. I've put a link to my Substack below where I've put all of this in nice bite-sized pieces of information so you can follow along with that. Cheers if you made it this far and happy printing. <laughs>